Hey guys, in this After Effects tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can animate some cool looking elements inspired by Vox. We're going to go through each elements and build our animation step by step. So with that said, grab a cup of your favorite drink and let's begin. The first example we're going to check is a character animation. Let's see how that was done. I got this image and then opened it up in Photoshop. I separated all the body parts into different layers as you can see. For the legs I kept it in one single layer cause we're gonna be using the puppet pin tool to animate them. I saved this as a layered PSD and imported it in After Effects as its own comp. So the first thing I did in After Effects was open up the character PSD comp. Then I started repositioning their anchor point to their proper positions. After this I started parenting the layers. You know the basic character rigging where the lower arm connects to the upper arm then the upper arm connects to the upper body that sort of stuff. Really some basic character rigging. For the animation I started the upper body since all the body parts are connected to it. I did a very basic up and down motion and looped it using the loop out expression. Then I started animating the arms. Here you can see I am doing a really very basic arm animation. Now it was time to tackle the legs. For this I used the puppet pin tool and started putting pins all over the legs. Then I started moving them to animate the legs. It was a bit tricky but in the end I finally managed to make it look a little bit decent. After this I kept on copy pasting these keyframes over the comp and time reversing them throughout the timeline. The reason why I did it because I didn't want the legs to continuously move throughout the animation. By copy pasting the keyframes I can control when they are moving. For the rest of the upper body animation I did the same as in I copy pasted their keyframes. Only the upper body torso got the loop out animation. And I mostly kept all the keyframes to linear. I think it helps with the overall jerky movements of the Vox style videos. The next thing was to make the light wrap around the character's edge. The first thing I did was drop this comp into the make new comp button and rename this new one. I tinted it, added a curve effect to add some more contrast. Then fill this comp with a yellow color. I duplicated this comp and added a choker effect by going effect, matte, simple choker. I choked this till the background comp's edges started showing. At this point I renamed both of the comps and spelled the word yellow wrong. <laughs> Anyways, I used the choker yellow fill to track matte the character choker. And now if we invert the matte, we can see we are left with this hollow edge. After this I duplicated the choker comp again and put it beneath the yellow fill comp. Now if I add a blur on the top choker comp and started playing with its value, I can control its spread. I can also lower down the opacity of the yellow comp to control its intensity. After this I duplicated the choker comp one more time and deleted all the effects other than the tint and changed both the colors to black. I added a mask feathered it and adjusted its opacity. So at this point the character animation is done now and you can add it to your own comp, change the color and you are good to go. So let's see how we can use this into an actual working composition. I opened up this base comp with two illustrator layers. I animated the first one position then turned the second layer into a shape layer. I animated its path to follow the top layer. Once done, I adjusted both of the layer speed graph so the movement it's a bit more snappy. After this, I created a new 1920 by 1080p comp. I dragged in the BG image, scaled it and repositioned it. Then dropped the illustrator base comp and the final character comp. I had to go back to the base comp and had to shift the keyframes cause it was happening in the very beginning. Back in the main comp, I animated the character comp's position and adjusted its speed graph to match with the base. After this, I created a null layer and parented this two comp with the null 
so I can move these layers without messing their animation up. I created a shape layer stroke and placed it behind the character comp. Also added some text at this point with a low opacity value. I pre-comped the base and the character comp at this point. I duplicated it and flipped it to work as a shadow. I filled it with a dark color, then went to Effect, Distort, CC Slant. I adjusted the slant, height and floor values till I was happy with it. Then added a blur and lowered down the opacity. I imported this grungy image, then went to Effect, Channel, Invert. Changed the layer's blending mode to Overlay so we can get those white specks. I also added a curve effect to add more contrast to the grunge. Then the usual effects, some noise on an adjustment layer and another one with a posterized time effect set to 12. Now here I just showed you one example. You can literally create so many variation of the same model and add it to your own compositions. Now let's go for the next one. Now the next thing we're gonna look at is a bar graph animation and how you can add some extra details to make it really stand out. So in After Effects, I created a new 1080p comp. I dragged my BG image inside along with this line element. I animated a mask over this line to reveal it, played with the keyframes and the speed graph to make the animation snappy. Then I duplicated and rotated and played with both of the lines position and scale to fit it inside the comp. After this, I created a shape layer stroke and animated it using the trim path feature. After this, I duplicated a whole bunch of them and spread them apart and offsetted them in the timeline. I created another two shape layer strokes with thicker radius. Then I animated them using the same trim path methods. Changed both of the strokes color and offsetted them in the timeline. So this is our base bar graph animation done. Now let's see how we can enhance them. I made this tiny graphic in Illustrator. I dragged it inside the comp. I animated its position property. Then I duplicated it, selected all the keyframes on this duplicate and started shifting it in a different position. I did this for a whole bunch of time till I was happy with the amount. Then I selected all the position keyframes, moved couple of frames and moved all of these layers a bit up. After this, I copy pasted the keyframe before this one and pasted it in all the layers. This will create a bouncy motion in these layers. Once this was done, I offsetted all the layers and you can see we got this nice bouncing particle effect. After this, I selected all the particles and pre comped them. Make sure to check on this button so the time doesn't change in this pre comp. I use this pre comp to track mat the bar behind it so the particles are confined within that shape. I duplicated the bar layer and put it behind the particle comb to get the bar back. Then I used all the previous methods which were being used in the character animation. Like adding some texture with a grungy image, some noise, posterized time effect, and finally making a snap zoom effect by adding a transform effect and then animating its scale value. Now I used relatively a small number of objects here. If you want to fill it with more object, I think you should go for a particle system instead of this method. As you can see by using these methods, you can breathe some life into your bar graph animations. Now let's see how we can make our object animations more interesting. When it comes to objects, we can highlight them in many ways. One method will be showing the internals of that object. And another one we can do is to actually incorporate some subtle animation inside that object to make it more interesting. Let's see both of these methods. So in Illustrator, I imported this bus PNG and then drew these details over them. The first thing is the base layer, which is just a solid color block with a stroke applied to it. The next thing were these seats. Again, they're just drawn with the pen tool and no fill inside them. The next layer was the seats layer again. 
but this time with a solid fill but no strokes. You can make this using Photoshop too. I just used Illustrator for the ease of using the strokes. I saved this as a layered Illustrator file. In After Effects, I created a new 1080p comp and named it Bus. Then I opened up the Bus composition and copied all the layers into this 1080p comp. I added a null and parented all the bus layers to it. I scaled down the bus in negative value, so it's flipped the other way. Then I added a tint and curve effect. After this, I started animating the bus from left to right. Ease the keyframes like before to get that snappy move. Once the bus reached its final position, I started animating the solid bus seats. I drew a mask for the first couple of seats and animated the layer's opacity from 0 to 100. Then I duplicated the layer and offset it, then shifted the mask for the next few seats. I repeated this for the last two seats and this is how the seats gonna get highlighted. Then I added a solid layer and added the gradient ramp effect to get a bit of variation on the BG. I added a text layer and added an opacity operator turned the opacity to 0 and animated the offset from 0 to 100. Now if I scrub, you can see the alphabets are appearing in a very smooth way. If you don't want it, you can open up the advanced tab and set the smoothness to 0. This will make it look more linear. Then I duplicated this and changed the text. After this I offsetted these text layers. For the final effect, all the previous effects as in the noise, posterize time and transform was added and it's done. So this is one way you can add detail to any of your objects. Now let's see another way. So in Photoshop, I got this retro real player thingy. I separated these two reels into different layers so I can animate them in After Effects. In After Effects, I open this real PSD comp, then line up the anchor point for both of these reels. Then I animated their rotation using a simple time expression. I created a new 1080p comp and dragged the real comp inside it. Added the BG, then started animating this real recorder coming down from the top and same speed curve was added to this comp. After this, I added a solid layer as a base and changed its anchor point to the bottom. Then I animated its scale just in the Y axis with the same speed curve. Then I offsetted this layer with the falling of the recorder. So as it settles into its final position, the base pops up. I added a text layer and also imported this paper texture. I repositioned both the text and the paper texture where I wanted. Then I animated a mask over the paper texture and used it as a track mat to reveal the text. Also duplicated it and put it behind the text as a base. I offsetted these text layers to sync with the real recorder animation. So when it comes to the center, the text gets revealed. After this, the same noise, transform and posterized time was added. And this is another way you can add some visual interest to your pretty standard object animations. So as you can see, just by using these simple methods, we can imitate the different styles from the Vox library. If you guys want all of these files, you can collect them from my Gumroad page. All of the three projects files are available there. As always, thank you all for watching. Leaving a like will be highly appreciated. And if you want to see more motion graphic content, please consider subscribing to Motion Nerds. Take care of yourselves and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye guys.